Hi there and welcome to this IBM Cloud Foundation Skills Series video. Uh, this video is going to be a, uh, a lab. It's going to be on how to uh, create and use uh, virtual server images. So here I am in my uh, my IBM Cloud console. Well, in fact, I'm actually on a, on a page where I've, I've actually created a, a brand new virtual machine. So this virtual machine is called a JRB DB template server. So the idea of this is that uh, um, uh, I've, I've created this server um, I've, um, I've, I've run the yum update and uh, I'm now going to install uh, we're going to show you installing uh, let's say MySQL and uh, then we're going to snapshot it so <clears throat> let's just quickly um, show you how to do that then we'll, we'll just just go through those steps so as I say this is this is a, um, well, it's a CentOS server again there's nothing particularly special about it it's uh, uh, two CPU calls and uh, four gig of RAM with a 25 gig boot disk um, it's just active, so I've got it um, up and running. As you can see, I've I've run the uh, the the yum update on there, um, and, um, and that's that's basically all that I've I've done with it so far. So let's uh, let's install uh, MySQL on there. So yum install uh, my my SQL. So um, I'm going to say yes to that. <clears throat> so off it will go and uh, install MySQL. Hopefully this won't take um, too long. Just let that run through. Okay, just verify, and there we go. It's all it's now all complete. So you can see that MySQL. So if I uh, so if I do a yum, uh, if I do a yum up. Update uh, MySQL. Then um, pretty much you're going to get no packages marked for update. So um, just goes to show that it's installed. The other thing that I'll do. Um, so let's do a listing here. Um, <clears throat> so I'm in my uh, so I'm in my root directory. So I'm going to make a make a directory. Um, so I'm going to call this uh, James. So let's tell us that, and I'm going to cd into James. And I'm going to uh, write um, it's James file txt, and I'm going to put in the message saying um, this is the file that I created for taking a snapshot, or uh, before making a template, I should say. Okay, so the idea is that um, when I actually create a um, create a new virtual server from this template, I'm going to make in a minute. You know that file will be on there. And there's no way that file would be on a on a normal um, on a normal machine. So, <clears throat> so I've installed MySQL. <clears throat> um, I've put that file on there. Um, I've done whatever other configuration that I wanted to do. So now I actually want to template this server so that I can just um, stamp out um, other versions of it. So it's dead easy to do this. So when you when you're in the state where you want to create your template, just click Actions, uh, come down this list, and create an image template. So I click on there, and um, it's now saying create an image template. So notice that you uh, you are uh, you are charged for image templates. Um, so um, so you know if you're creating lots of them, then you'll be uh, uh, you'll be um, you, you will be charged for them. So let's give it a name. So I'm going to call this my uh, DB server template. And uh, let's say this is my demo template. So just give it a name. So I know. So it's a name. So I know what it is. You know what it's supposed to be doing. Put a note in there if you want. You know if it's for a particular project or something. Um, then, um, then, then uh, you can make a note of it there so people can see that. Now this bit's quite important uh, because usernames and passwords will be copied to the new image. So, um, so just make sure that you've got the right one in there, um, so you can highlight it and see what it is. So if you have changed the password, um, then um, you, you need to make sure that um, you've, you've recorded it in there because obviously when you create the new create the new server. Um, if, if this information isn't correct, then you're not going to be able to log into it or somebody else isn't going to be able to log into it. Uh, the key really is, is once you've created the new server, 
make sure you change the password in that new server otherwise you know they're all going to have the same password which obviously is not great for uh, not great for security so um, so the next thing is is uh, select the drive that you want to create the template for so if you want to just create it for the um, uh, for the system drive um, then you can tick that if you want to create it for all drives then uh, tick that so for instance if you have created a database or, or a, a system with other data on other disks then uh, just make sure you capture all the disks that you actually want to template. I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to leave it at that for now. Um, you do actually need to have your, your, your server, your server instance will be powered off whilst the template is taken. So effectively what happens is the, uh, the, um, the system is turned off, uh, the disk is effectively frozen and then the copy is taken. So, so if you're doing this, you know, make sure you're not in the other users aren't on it and in the middle of doing something because the thing will be powered off. So, okay, so we're all ready to go. Um, so let's um, click Create Template. And away we'll go. And this, this may take a few minutes. Um, so uh, you can see that it's uh, image template, oh, uh, image template created successfully. So it's already done. It's obviously quite a small image. Um, sometimes if you've got a larger image, it can take a little bit longer. Um, but, um, um, but, but that, that one's been pretty quick. So these are so this is the list of the uh, the images that I've uh, that I've actually got running. Um, so um, let me see now. Um, I can't actually see the uh, the host that I've got here. But what I can then do is so so if I want to uh, now actually create a another server from that image, uh, what I can do is go to devices and then manage and then go to uh, go to images. So these are all the image templates that are currently on my account. So you can see I've actually got three here. So these are um, these are two that I created um, a while ago. You can see what data I did actually create them. So it was in October in 2018. And uh, these are actually two um, developer services that I created. Um, so there's one with Ubuntu and there's one on Windows. And I have, a, I have developer templates on there. So it's things like uh, development tools are on there. Uh, this is the one that we've just created, and you can see that the transaction is still in progress. So that's going to take a, so that's going to take a few minutes. Um, well, I suppose what I could show you is is actually creating uh, creating from one of these other templates. So, it's just, so this is an Ubuntu server that I created last year. So if I want to create another one of those, all I do is uh, is click on Actions, and then order and then order the kind of um, server that I that I actually want. So um, so if I want to uh, create another uh, public server. Well, actually, we can all different server types. I'm going to order a transient virtual server. So uh, if I just click on there, then it will order this server up uh, with that particular image on it. So again, it's dead easy. So you basically go through the uh, go through the the, the normal order page. So um, let's do that. So uh, my Ubuntu dev server. So just want one of those. Again, if I wanted, you know, if I wanted loads of these, I can I can up the quantity, and uh, it will it will make more than one for me. Um, I can choose where I want it. So even though I probably created this one in uh, in London, I can choose to run it anywhere I like. So for instance, I wanted to put this one in uh, in Sydney. Um, let's do that um, just for just for the for the sake of it. I can do that. I can choose um, again. I can choose what uh, what profile I want it to have. So if I want, so I, I think when I created it, it'd probably have just one and one. But if I wanted to, I can create it with eight and sixteen. So again, I'm not uh, I'm not actually uh, restricted by uh, uh, by by the way that I've created it. So I'm going to choose that for now. Um, it's going to be a custom. So, um, so because I'm I'm actually using my uh, my own uh, um, my own template. So I'm going to leave it at custom. And uh, then I can just create the, the the interfaces that I want. I'm not going to do any of that. I'm just going to click uh, click create, and uh, so there's the details there. So I click create, and that's going to go away. And that's going to, now going to create me uh, my Ubuntu server, um, which is going to be running some development tools for me. So that's nice and quick. So that's one example of doing that. <coughs> Okay, so I'm just going to uh, I'm going to add a tag to that as well, just to just to show that it's mine. Um, so James um, uh, Dev 
tools, so then I know what it's for. So I'm going to save that. Okay, so that's done. Uh, what I'm then going to do, I'm going to go back to my uh, my infrastructure page. I'm just going to go and see if that other template is now finished creating. So again, I'll go to devices, I'll go to manage, and um, I'll go to images. So, uh, so that transaction is still in. No, um, so there's a transaction in process um, with that template. So, uh, so you can see there that I'm actually creating some uh, an image there at the moment. But you can see that this one is actually now created. Um, so I'm just going to click on there. So this gives you the, the details of the image template. So you can actually see. Um, so you can actually see when it was enabled, um, any licenses, any uh, anything that's. Uh, um, what disk space it has, um, where it's actually been created as well, so Dallas 13. Uh, so it gives you a fair bit of information about the actual template. So again, let's go and create one of these. Um, so I'm going to order a, a public virtual server. Uh, I'm going to make it public. I only want one of them. So I'm going to call this my uh, second DB server. Uh, I'm going to create it in Dallas again because that's where I want it. Let's make it two CPUs and uh, four gig of RAM. Um, CentOS is fine. And uh, I'm going to say OK to that. OK, and then I'm going to click Create. So again, this is going from custom image. So just make sure that orders. Okay, so um, so again, you can see you can see that's there. So that's going to take uh, that's going to take a couple of minutes to uh, just add a tab to that. So that's going to just take a couple of minutes to uh, to provision. So um, I'll uh, I'll pause there, and um, when when it's done, I'll I'll come back and uh, and uh, I'll, I'll show you it. Uh, I'll, sh I'll show you it logged in. Right, so here we are. It's a few minutes later, and uh, my uh, my server is now. Uh, has now actually been created from my image and it's up and running. So, uh, so let's go and take a look at it. Um, so here's my window. So let's uh, let's just uh, SSH into it. So let's just double check the IP address. Um, cool. And uh, let's put in the uh, the password. Okay. So um, so there's uh, so, so we're now logged in. So if I try and do a, a yum update, I've, I've not actually logged into the server before. If I try and do a yum update, um, then I should be told that uh, everything's pretty much up to date. Uh, now, obviously, when you normally build a server, you, you'd expect to see that uh, um, you know there's at least one or two packages or, or great big long list of packages that actually need to be updated. Um, but this is saying no packages marked for updates. That's great. And um, I should also, um, if I do a yum update... Um, MySQL. So again, no packages marked for updates. So it's already it's already actually installed. Um, so then, if I go to uh, so then let's see if that file uh, that I, that I put on the other server is there. So yeah, you can see um, I've got my uh, my my uh, my James directory is there. So if I cd into James, um, you can see the James file is there, which is exactly what we, what we expect to see. And uh, if we go and look at it, this is the file I created before making a template. So there we go. So um, so proof, if you needed it, that uh, that, that server has actually been built uh, from the template. So um, another couple of things about templates, or a couple of things to uh, to, to know about templates. If I go back to uh, if I go back to my manage and then um, back to uh, back to images, then. Um, so some of the bits and pieces I can do with this, I can obviously um, order, well, I've already showed you, I can order different types of virtual server. I can't actually do this with bare metal servers. I can't order a bare metal server um, using a uh, using an image template. I can't do that. I can uh, export the image to cloud object storage. So if I, wanna, if I want to store this in cloud object storage, then I just need to uh, give it a name, um, select the uh, the instance of object storage that I want to uh, that I want to put it into. Select a location, so let's say the G B G B, and uh, then all I need to do is just select the bucket that I want to put it into. So 
um, if you've already created your object storage in your bucket, you can do that. You then just need to put in your API key. Um, so I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not going to do that at the minute, but uh, the, finding the API key is quite simple from your object storage. So let's just cancel that. Uh, the other thing you can do is, you can, if you want to, you can delete the image. So if you no longer need it, maybe you've uh, it's been superseded um, or, or the project's finished or whatever, you can actually delete it and then obviously you're no longer paying for... Uh, uh, paying for the storage. The other thing you do is actually create a public image. So if I want to share this, um, I'll just click uh, create public image and um, I'll just take a, a couple of seconds for the screen to load. And um, it, this again, this is a fairly uh, simple um, simple process. So you just give you give yourself a name, so James B, um, give it an image name, so my DB server image. So give it a summary, so why would people want to use this? So summary, uh, and then just give a description um, of, uh, you know, this is what my server does. Uh, and uh, you can then uh, cho choose the locations where you actually want to place place the image itself. Uh, so um, then and just uh, clicking, uh, clicking create just makes it available for everybody. I'm not going to do this now, but you know, if you do decide to do this, make sure you don't have any sensitive data in the in the image. So, you know, any uh, personal information about either yourself or other people or passwords, etc., etc. So, anything that's sensitive, just make sure you don't have it there because it's it's going to be public and everybody will be able to see it. So, if you want to do that, um, just go ahead and uh, click create. Um, I'm, I'm not going to because it's not really something that I uh, that's uh, that's worth making public. Okay. So, well, that's uh, that, that's about it for this uh, for this particular lab. Um, I hope it's been useful. So we covered the uh, the steps for actually creating an image template from your virtual machine. Um, I showed you how to create a new virtual server from the template, and uh, indeed I showed showed you that for uh, the the one that we created, and also one that I created some time ago. Um, I showed you how to uh, very quickly. I showed you how to store an image on cloud object storage. So if, for instance, you wanted to uh, just store that a bit more longer term uh, within object storage, I showed you how to go ahead and do that. Uh, and I also showed you how to, how to actually make an image public as well um, and, and share it amongst a wider audience. So that's it for this video. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it again. And as usual, uh, if you've got any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them. And um, I'll see you next time.